Hey, what's up guys, Aravi here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 94 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in Season 6. If you guys did miss the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, the previous episode uploaded only two days ago, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. That was a pretty bittersweet one, really. It was a tough old race for ourselves. I mean, as a whole for the team, though, it was a, it was a great one, of course. Our title Arrival from last season, our brand new teammate for this one, George Russell, was able to grab the win at Baku to get his first win of the season and the team's first win of the season. And despite us having a bit of a mare at the end of the race, we were able to get into the lead of the Constructors' Championship ahead of Red Bull Porsche, a very a strong one led by Antonio Giovinazzi, who still has a very healthy lead in the Drivers' Championship. I, I would have said Schumacher's right there, but actually, if you look at it, you know, look at two episodes to go. I was talking about how strong Schumacher was, and both as a pairing will be very tough to beat, but now it's a bit of a different story. It looks like Schumacher is falling away a little bit, as he did last season, and it's down to the Italian to lead the Red Bulls at the forefront there, but he's got so many points that he's actually given us a good fight in the Constructors, but uh, yeah, we're still there though in the top four, despite you know, coming away from Baku a little bit annoyed, we're still in a decent position in terms of the championship, and there's still a long, long way to go. I'm not really even even thinking about fully yet, you know, who's gunning for the championship. It's just about honestly getting the best result we can. Because even Schumacher, if he wanted to, could still get back into this, really, with a series of good results. And it's so tightly packed every single race. And we've seen a bit of resurgence from the Alpha Tauris last episode, Leclerc and Gasly, both on the podium. So that's a bit of a surprise. You know, I thought Alpha Tauri fell away a little bit, you know, last season into this one. But maybe they're finding their feet again and are ready to once again be at the forefront of F1 and be a team that's there in the mix for regular podiums, perhaps, like they were in uh, Season 4, remember, when Gasly was in a title fight with us and uh, Jensen Button. And Ferrari... They keep popping up. They're there in qualifying. Ocon's won a race at Monaco. So things are looking better than they have in previous seasons where they've just only been qualifying well and not doing anything in the race. At least Ocon has got a win now under his belt. And... Ferrari and Quali, it's not just that they're quick, they look so, so quick in some different sessions, and it's the same here again as Ocon tops Q1 as we enter the race weekend for the Canadian Grand Prix. It was a tough affair for us last episode, I will admit that. I don't know where the race pace just went versus George Russell. Canada, Montreal's hopefully a reset, you know, Baku hopefully is going to be just a blip, because this is one of my favourite circuits to come to. It's a circuit I think, generally speaking, I'm quite fast at, and so I'm hoping that we can just show that that was just a, a one-off, basically. And even though Russell got all the applause for winning the Grand Prix, that we're still very much here. And our consistency has been pretty good. Apart from last episode, uh, you know, and the first race of a DNF that was out of our control, we've been there scoring decent points. But that first lap in Q2, unfortunately for us, is not that great, actually. We actually lost a, a fair amount of time on that lap, even compared to our Q1 time. Russell has tried to qualify on medium, so that suggests he's that confident about his pace, so that's a little bit concerning. Off the back of a win, we know momentum swings can be massive uh, in this series and on this game, so uh, that's an interesting one. Both Alpha Tauris as well, you know, so all the podium runners from the last episode think they can get through a medium, so um, I don't know what that exactly means for the kind of pace they're going to show, but we are going much better on this second lap than Purple the first sector, Green the second, although only about two and a half tenths gained across the line, so we're actually still setting a slower lap time than we did in Q, uh, Q1, and we just about make it through. George Russell, though, does not. Russell is knocked out in P11, ironically, the highest position he can have a free choice of tyre of, so he wanted to start on mediums in the top 10. He's going to get the chance to start on mediums anyway from P11, but it might be a fresh set, and to be fair to Russell, with how he drove last episode, maybe that might be an OP strategy for him and might come in clutch, but we have made it through just about, but 
like in Baku, I don't really, you know, we, we had this really nice period in season five and the start of this season where I felt like finally I was actually okay in qualifying because historically I will fully admit, and you guys know over the, over the games, over the years, I am not a qualifier. I don't, I can't string a lap together most of the time that is inch perfect to, to get that pole position. There's always something a little bit amiss. Uh, but in re, you know, in the recent episodes, last season especially, and the start of this season where we got a pole, you know, I, I thought, you know, okay, I'm, maybe I'm starting to get the hang of qualifying on this game, but last episode was a massive dent to the confidence, and this one again is baffling. The car felt worse, and just wasn't giving me the lap time in Q2. Q3 here as well. We're here on our one and only flying lap, and just generally as we've gone on through this Saturday, the car has gone away from me at the moment. I believe it looks like Leclerc is on provisional pole position. This is my one and only lap here, because we used two sets of soft tyres in Q2 to get through here. The Alpha Tauris have clearly made a bit of a step up and return maybe to the forefront. Some confidence for their drivers along with the Ferrari guys. We're oversteering through the hairpin in towards the wall of champions. Understeer and we have to actually narrowly avoid hitting the wall and lifting off on purpose to make sure we don't hit the wall of champions. And so with that, I actually set a time that nearly matches my Q1 lap time finally there actually even with all that oversteering and understeering. And yet it is is about six tenths off pole position. What is going on? I don't know where the pace for me in this car has gone. Even Russ obviously knocked out. This is not a great start to the Canadian Grand Prix race weekend. One of my favourite ones usually. Um, yeah, Leclerc on pole position. A checkerboard of Alpha Tower and Ferrari. You know, maybe it's just the circuit because Red Bull also are down on pace and they were looking mighty quick in the first few races, even in qualifying. So it may just be track to track. And right now it's just a it's a period where we need to try and get through it. Um, you know, Norris does very well to get that McLaren up into the top 10 anyway in P7. Guan Yu Zhou and Drogovic. Lotus Renault in the top 10 in P9. Out qualifying me. A Lotus Renault. So, this is, um, yeah, we need to try and do better in the race. I hope we can do. So, let's go to the grid for Sunday. Hello and welcome to the Ile Notre Dame once again for what promises to be another incredible Canadian Grand Prix and a fiercely competitive circuit where pole position can often be decided by less than a tenth of a second. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles an hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous wall of champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and the final chicane. And it's an absolute pleasure to be joined once again by Anthony Davidson. Let's discuss Red Bull. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole with Esteban Ocon alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have, Gasly, Sainz, Mick Schumacher, and Giovinazzi. Joe, Drogovic, the owner driver, and George Russell. Bottas, Verstappen, Christian Lundgaard, and Sonoda. Matsushita, Aitken, Lando Norris. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Lance Stroll, Hamilton, Eilert, Armstrong, and Daniel Tictum. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. All right, so this is going to be a pretty standard two-stop then, as the Canadian Grand Prix always is, from soft tyres to two sets of mediums. Russell will be starting on a set of mediums, uh, probably a fresh set, not the one that he tried to qualify on, but he's still got his wish of starting the race on an alternative tyre, so he may go longer and maybe quicker at the end of the race. We're going to have to, with the rest of the top ten, manage the tyre at the start of this race, especially around, I'd say, lap five to eight, when the tyres start to wear, and then we'll go from there 
there on the medium tyre, which is usually quite consistent around here. We're actually going to start P9 due to an engine penalty for the McLaren. So here we go then to five red lights to the Canadian Grand Prix here in Montreal. The lights are out and we're underway, but definitely not as quick as our teammate Russell and the two Mercedes cars. Verstappen and Bottas swamp us into turn one. It's probably one of the worst starts we've had for ages here off the five red lights. We're down to P11. Russell, the mediums, up into P9, fighting the Lotus Renault on the outside. They're side by side. Verstappen is going to get held up a little bit. The man who had a massive crash at Baku here, trying to bounce back a bit, but we're going to get him as that Mercedes showing its kind of true pace as of late, not really being there anymore like it used to at the start of the career mode series on this game, as it's nearly three abreast into that next right-hander between Schumacher, uh, and Carlos Sainz, and Guan Yu Zhou, that was, in the Williams, and it might be three wide again. Look at the Chinese driver go in the Williams Jaguar, down the inside, three wide of the hairpin, and on the exit still. What a spectacle. Williams v Red Bull, the Ferrari, and the Spaniard is going to get Giovinazzi, and then going to have a battle with Zhou. So that is very exciting, and, you know, Williams have had a very, very tough time of it as of late. Two really tough races where they've not scored many, if any, points, really, actually, to memory. So, Guan Yu Zhou trying to make the uh, most of this kind of circuit, which does suit the Williams, you know, all about straight line speed compromise, as we now watch on a, a well, a great scrap happening ahead of us between uh, Drogovic and Giovinazzi. We're catching up to George Russell, but unable to really make any sort of ends way through at the moment. It's so awkward. Look at this. How many times am I I'm having to lift off here just to take avoiding action from uh, tapping the front wing? So much so that Bottas tried to send one uh, around the outside of me in that left-hander because I, I'm getting held up so much uh, by this fighting going on. But, you know, it's tricky because there's parts of this circuit where it's just so hard to actually make that move. And Russell is driving very well on these medium tyres. He's proving like a very difficult man to try and overtake. As we're now going to try and have a look on the inside of turn one. But Russell gives us the room, but then just pinches us enough and just takes the raw racing line. We then get attacked by Bottas again. But we're definitely seeing, I think, off the back of last episode, into this one as well. The way he drove at Baku and now he's driving now. We're seeing the Russell we saw last season in a McLaren. Relentless. We get past him eventually with DRS and you you need to expect us to get past because we're on soft tyres. But just think about how difficult that was. Or, you know, And he's on the slower compound of tyres. So I think we're starting to, you know, it took a while for him to heat up in our car. But we're seeing that Russell that was so bloody difficult to, you know, beat in the championship last season and you can see that by the fact of you know he's second in the championship as it stands right now going to this one uh, but we've now got past him thankfully we can actually do some work on the soft compound before we go on to that very medium he is on right now and uh, we've got clean air up to Lotus Renault P8 Drogovic then Giovinazzi Schumacher Sainz Guan Yu Zhou who's being very much pressurized by Carlos Sainz lovely camera angle there as you see uh, the Spaniard try and close up to the Chinese driver and the battle for P2 Gasly versus Ocon the two bitter rivals in real life there. It's a 1-2 for Alfa Tauri. So they are absolutely flying here at the moment. And specifically, Leclerc is dominating this one. 3.3 the gap. That's massive when you think about the gaps usually we have in these career modes. So Leclerc is loving life. And to be fair, Gasly looks like he's doing him a favour. Gasly is definitely holding up Ocon here a bit. I can just sense that Ocon has a bit more race pace in this. But Gasly is doing a, a great job of being a bit of a rear gunner at the moment in this race as we try and battle towards the Lotus Renault closing up to the Brazilian debuting this season in F1. I'm sure a few of you excited to see him in here, especially in the black and gold of Lotus as well. A bit of a retro throwback for this team this year. And they're doing well. They've been doing well this season, but we're going to try and spoil the party on the inside. And uh, well, the Brazilian's actually so slow over the curb that he compromises his own run. And he's now going to be three wide and being attacked by two far more experienced drivers is there. Bottas on the outside. Russell on the inside there. And George is up into P9. And we've got uh, Valtteri Bottas trying to get the overtake. But to be fair to Drogovic, he's actually kept it going. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
very fine margins there, but I think Bottas has overtaken him. Yes, he has, as we now move into lap seven at the hairpin. It's still so close between Guan Yu Zhou, Sainz, and now Schumacher is slowly joining the party. So it may be a three-way fight again between the Red Bull, Ferrari, and the Williams car. Zhou, though, doing well at the moment as there's a big incident. Pierre Gasly's hit the wall of champions. And it's a massive impact. The safety car is out. He's out the Grand Prix. And what has just happened? Both our tyres are punching. Both tyres on the right-hand side are out. And we can't stop the car. We're going to hit the wall. We're going to nearly hit the safety car. What just went on there in the debris? We've got two bunches. And they're both on the right-hand side. This is a calamity. In a split second, our entire race has been turned upside down. Because both our right-hand side tyres have been punchy. Look at the delamination there on the front right and the rear right tyre is not going to be any better as the safety car is out waiting for the leaders. We are now hobbling on two wheels on our left hand side to try and get back to the pit lane to make a desperate change of, of tyres. What is that? I have never seen that. I have never seen two punches on one side of the car in a normal like career mode race. Let alone really even a puncher of debris. That's very rare to happen. And I'm being told I've got rear wing damage, which is another thing that has never occurred to us. Even in that random Monaco race we had in season two, where I think we picked up pretty much every damage you could with the new damage model on the floor and the barge board. We've never broken our rear wing, but we've actually got significant damage that it's yellow on the heads up display, I'm pretty sure. But I mean, first and foremost, even the puncher itself is very rare. I've never seen debris cause a puncture like this in a, in a normal career mode setting. Uh, maybe in like other wacky videos where we intentionally try to get a bit of damage and kind of and whatnot be just a bit silly, but in a, in a just normal sort of race setting just really, really bad, to, like, unfortunate placing in my car. Like, we were just going through. I even lifted off just to make sure we weren't going to hit anything like the, you know, the, the Gasly's car, but the debris was just there. I didn't even notice us going over it. I only noticed the heads up display popping up and then we hit the wall once so that's already one tap to our rear wing and pretty much we actually hit the safety car it ghosted if that was real life my god can you imagine the scenes of an actual f1 car hitting a safety car like that out of control with two punches just so dangerous so unbelievable but we have limped but but we have limped back home to the pit lane on lap 8. But you can see, well, Norris is out of the Grand Prix under the safety car. The McLaren has to retire. We're going to finally change these two tyres on the right-hand side. And the front wing needs fixing as well. The rear wing can't be fixed. But this safety car is coming in. We've only just made it to the pit lane. This is a disaster. I thought we could actually somehow maybe salvage this. But no, we're going to get lapped even before we get going. We've put on a brand sp spanking new of medium tyres, new front wing, but we've got a bit of floor damage and quite a fair bit of rear wing damage. But Guan Yu Zhou leads us away in P1 off the safety car restart because I believe Leclerc and Ocon, the two race leaders, they actually pit under the safety car. The rest of the grid opted not to, which was very, very odd. So Guan Yu Zhou leads, but look at that. We've got a brick yellow rear wing on the damage indicator. So that's not even like a light bit of damage. That's a significant amount, so I don't know what that's going to feel like. I guess we're going to see that for the very first time uh, ever on the F1 game, rear wing damage. Uh, I'm going to say it, it feels... It doesn't feel too bad. I can definitely tell some corners you're going to see I'm having to take it a lot easier on the throttle because the rear downforce is not there. But in a straight line, it's not too much of an issue. Mid corner, it feels a little bit floaty, almost like we have oh, floor damage. And you can see that's what I mean by, you know, even across the curbs because the rear downforce is not pressing the car down into the curb. We, you know, we're having a few issues and we are, well, what you're watching here is I'm trying to unlap myself 
myself because you can see I've been lapped up to P9. So I'm trying to un unlap myself because then if there is a safety car later in the race, there's a there's half a chance if I'm ahead of everyone and they're not lapped me, I will be allowed to rejoin the back of the of the train, the safety car. But doing that's proving very difficult. The car is, yeah, is not feeling great. I can definitely tell there's something, you know, I can tell there's damage, but, you know, it's not, you know, huge, huge amounts of undrivability. It's just in some places, the rear end steps when I don't expect it to, and general pace is not that great. It's when we want to lap 12, uh, that, the pace is not the only thing that I'm finding issues with. It's also the blue flags, because every time I overtake a car, if I don't get a far enough ahead of them, then I get the blue flag for that car I just overtook. So it's going to be a long, long afternoon trying to do anything in this race, as we are still one lap down from most. But Russell now leads the way as Guan Yu Zhou and a few others have pit. Russell yet to pit. And it's going to be three wide for the race lead as Ocon goes waltzing around the outside of Leclerc and Russell. Those two have already made their pit stop, so they are legitimately fighting for the race lead. This is absolutely amazing. Ocon and Leclerc duking it out. Leclerc was dominating the first stint, but now Ocon is free to show his race pace. He's not got that, uh, you know, he's not got Gasly holding him up. And this is why I meant, you know, it felt like Ocon had more pace in the tank. And there you go, because Scuderia Ferrari now leads the Canadian Grand Prix ahead of Alpha Tauri's Leclerc. But what an amazing, epic fight that was, even with Russell. That was for position, because Russell's still going. He's yet to pit at that stage. So it was three abreast for the race lead. Absolutely stonking stuff there. And then they were side by side anyway into the hairpin. Brilliant stuff. Uh, you know, great to watch. And, uh, well, now we've got a race on our hands now because Leclerc surely will be trying to come back at Ocon now for the remainder of this race. For us, though, we're still, well, we're still lapped and we're still trying to unlap ourselves from as many cars as we can. We're trying to unlap ourselves from Lance Stroll right now uh, on the inside there in the Aston Martin. Uh, Hamilton P5. So we're not too many cars away from actually unlapping ourselves from everyone, but I've still got to make a pit stop. Everyone else, you know, a few people have already made that, uh, that pit stop maybe. And, you know, even if I do unlap myself from everyone, you know, I've still got a whole lap then to make up with a broken rear wing, which is not giving me any kind of lap time. You can see I'm not setting any personal best. We overtake Hamilton, and this is the other issue to contend with of why I don't think I'll even unlap myself because I have to let Hamilton back through. Uh, I, I finally now understand the pain back markers go through, like true back markers uh, for in Formula 1 because it's very hard to actually do your own race when you have to constantly, you know, be under the barrage of blue flags. Um, and yeah, so massive frustration. I, I was massively down. Uh, in the cockpit at this point, uh, cataclysmically down, to be honest, in terms of mood, because I knew there was nothing I could actually do. You know, even if a safety car came out now, I would be screwed because I couldn't unlap myself because the game does not have a mechanic to unlap yourself under a safety car. So I would be in the mud, and I'm going to be in the mud even more so because as I... Uh, well, as you can clearly see, George Russell... My teammate, my bitter rival from last season, he is coming up to lap me, and I have to oblige. So this is going to be so painful. Oh my god! Okay, that one hurt. That one hurt. That one hurt. He's he's not only our teammate this season. He's the man we fought so hard in the championship last season. And uh, even though I won last season, you know, there's still a bit of you know a, a big rivalry going on. And um, well. He just lapped us. And he's also the race winner from last episode. And he's the one who's got the one and only win for the team. So uh, that was pretty much the nail in the coffin. And uh, I decided on lap 19 to call it a day. Because, you know, it, there's so many laps left. I've got no pace because of the rear wing breakage. There is no point continuing on in this race because, as I said, I would need to unlap myself first and foremost, and then I've got to pray for a safety car, but I don't think I can even unlap myself.
So the safety guard wouldn't even matter. As Ocon now is in, Leclerc continues on. So Ocon trying the undercut then on Leclerc to maintain his race lead. We've got Guan Yu Zhou who's just come in with the Williams up in, well, around a P P3 that is for the Williams driver. So doing very well. But we've got some um, uh, Sita in the BMW Sauber. He's in P2 now. And I don't really know where he fits in. But I think he's actually legitimately maybe fighting for some good points here today. Um, along with maybe just about a few others like Sonoda who are actually somehow making their way up the order. Russell is massively out of contention for points uh, as well as Bottas because Bottas is kind of where Russell is and Bottas has already made the pit stop Russell's yet to make, uh, if you know what I mean because those two are together on circuit so I think even Russell may have a hard time today because he got screwed over basically with the timing of that first safety car being on medium still when others made their first pit stop and got a free pit stop as we can see now, Leclerc's made his pit stop now uh, for the end of the Grand Prix, but Ocon maintains the race lead. Two seconds the gap is just about, so the Ferrari is actually looking very decent, surprisingly. Could Ocon be on for a second shock win in this season? Could Ferrari be on for a shock multiple win season in season six? At the moment though, behind them, Verstappen P3, Guan Yu Zhou, Schumacher, then you've got the BMW Machusito, who I think genuinely is there in P6, so that is quite something. Hamilton in P7, Bottas, Sonoda, Stroll, then Giovinazzi and Russell. Two major players. The top two in the championship are outside the top ten, but the na there's, a, there's a safety car. A second safety car now this episode is out, and I know what people are going to say. Oh, it came out. We could have... No, no. I wasn't going to unlap myself. I was literally nowhere... I had to make a pit stop, remember, still, in this race. So I was nowhere near unlapping myself. I would have loved to have tried to be here for this safety car and been in the back of this train. And then it's like a sprint race at the end to try and get into the points. But the fairy tale was not happening this time round because... I was just so far behind, and I had rear wing damage, so you can't really blame me too much. But now we see, on the restart, that it was a good exit for Ocon, Leclerc, Verstappen, and the rest. But uh, Hamilton here has a bit of damage, I think. I think there was a Lotus Renault of Lungard or Djokovic or someone retiring in the, on the main straight, and so Hamilton's got damage, so he's holding up Bottas, and this has allowed the likes of Giovinazzi and Russell to get in the mix here, as Giovinazzi overtakes Stroll for one point in the championship, and Russell is going for a move as well on the Aston Martin. These two lead the championship, one and two respectively, so this could potentially be a crucial fight, really, in the races to come for some last crucial points here. It's been a tough day in the office for Giovinazzi and Russell. Both of them got, uh, you know, caught out with the safety cars, traffic as well. And so Hamilton does them a favour by holding everyone up here. And so now they can get in a fight potentially with the cars ahead. Yuki Tsunoda, Valtteri Bottas maybe further up the road. But first and foremost, Giovinazzi right up the gearbox off Tsunoda, trying to get up into P8 at least minimum. But yeah, Bottas P7. Then you've got the BMW Sauber in P6. Shoot Schumacher flying the flag for Red Bull. Maybe listen to what I was saying earlier in the episode about uh, lagging behind. So he's up in P5, pressurizing quite a fair bit. Guan Yu Zhou in P4. And Verstappen at the moment is doing quite amazing to be up in P3. I don't know quite what the strategy was for Verstappen and how he's got here. I think he just used the, the, the safeguards to good measure. But he's uh, vaulted himself up into a P3. He doesn't really uh, deserve to be in. Based on the pace in qualifying in the last couple of races for the Dutchman. But here he goes now, Giovinazzi. Oh! Oh, great defending from Yuki Tsunoda, though, in the McLaren. He's had a really torrid time of it at his new team in the Chrome and Red. But now, this race, he's desperate, it would seem, to hold on to at least four points in this championship as he defends so hard from Giovinazzi that Russell overtakes him. So that could be quite interesting for the standings. But we're going to maybe see now Russell v Tsunoda. And Tsunoda again with the big squeeze to the inside. This is actually fantastic defending from Sonoda. He's like driving like almost like an actual person here at the moment squeezing these guys and it's almost three wide. It is three wide. Oh, what great racing this is. McLaren v Golf Porsche versus Red Bull Porsche and Giovinazzi now is the man in P9. Russell's back down to P10. Sonoda hanging on to P8 but for how much longer? Gio now side by side. They're going to be side by side with this entire section now as the Italian won't give up but Russell's also there lurking around. Might be another three-wide moment, to be honest. Let's go again. 
uh, it's DRS Central. It might be three wide. No, not quite. Russell has to back out of it. Giovinazzi's made the overtake. Sonoda pushed wide and he's down to P9. And now, oh no, but he's back. No, he's back. He's back. It's still side by side. So they've been side by side now. That's pretty much nearly a whole racing lap this will be as we enter now the main back straight. Absolutely amazing. I actually uh, uh, should give Sonoda some even more credit. I thought he got done by Giovinazzi finally there, but no, he continued on. And now we've got another three wide fight. What great racing this is. And what an amazing uh, bit of uh, racing there from Russell because he just got a two for one deal up into P8 and Giovinazzi and P9 Sonoda now gets overtaken maybe by the Lotus Renault. So he tried so hard to know so so hard but the Brazilian may just ruin it for the Japanese man it's uh, the Lotus Renner around the outside into the next chicane oh very close this is actually incredible racing here this is the second last half of the Grand Prix remember as well so the stakes are high Sonoda though will remain in P10 just about ahead of the Lotus Renault wonderful wonderful racing none of it involving me so it's even more impressive to be fair from AI on AI fighting here and and uh, so Schumacher, though, the running order, BMW Sauber, I want to say Matsushita, he's done amazing. P6 in that BMW is absolutely unreal. Schumacher P5, Verstappen P3, Guan Yu Zhou in the Williams Jaguar will get a podium and return Williams to, uh, well, to where the heights they were in for the last two seasons, uh, if you've watched on. And then Leclerc and Ocon are the top two. Ocon, though, 2.3 ahead looks like he's looking pretty comfortable for this race win. And as we skip on to the end of the last lap of the Grand Prix, it will be the victory for Scuderia Ferrari. It will be the victory for Esteban Ocon. Two wins this season for Ferrari. Could this be the start of a subtle dark horse challenge for the Prancing Horses and Ocon? Leclerc P2, a second P2 in a row there for him. So that's very good as well to book in a bit of consistency. And the two championship leaders are down in P8 and P9. That has been a very topsy-turvy Canadian Grand Prix. One that saw us have two punches, hitting the wall, hitting the safety car and breaking our rear wing. <laughs> that's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Ferrari are at it again, an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix. And they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. I think it's the first time Ferrari have actually won two races in a season, correct me if I'm wrong, since like whatever, I think, in this entire career mode series. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't remember it. And if it did, it did before, it's very un uh, unrememberable because Ocon here has done it. And he's been driving exquisitely, to be fair. You know, he's, remember, he's debuting in this team. You know, Science has been there from the start of, this, uh, of, the, of the career series, six seasons in. And uh, he's, you know, ruffling the feathers and becoming like the new de facto team leader in uh, Ferrari. And even Leclerc there, you know, two second places in a row. He's also ruffling the feathers of Gasly, the established team leader at Alpha Tauri. Both of them doing an insane job. Grand New Joe, great return to the podium for him. You know, Williams, we've been used to them now, being one of the top teams in F1 the last two seasons. So it's good to see them return there after a bit of struggling in the last couple of episodes. And uh, so in the Drivers' Championship then, all change a little bit. Apart from Giovinazzi, he still leads the way by six points, just showing the dominance he had, actually, of those two wins in a row and the consistency he's shown up until now. Uh, Ocon in second now. Now, though so he is firmly now in you know in in the conversation Russell P3 and despite us being way down in P6 in comparison to P1 you know in terms of points there's still because we've got such a long way to go still I'm still not worried you know it has been massively frustrating don't get me wrong that was so unfortunate and sad the way our race ended I mean in a spectacular fashion so if, if your race is going to end like that I may as well
as well have wanted it to end like that. You know, you can't do much about two punches of being a whole lap down and with rear wing damage. But uh, my God, uh, what a mad episode for, for us personally. And then the championship as well. But there's a long way to go. I'm not worried yet. You know, unlike last season with those two DNFs in a row, I'm not worried quite yet that same way because we've got a few more races in the banker. And Russell has only just won his first race for the, for the team and for himself last episode. So I think our time is still yet to come and our, you know, time to shine is still upon us this season at some point. But guys, if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.